of the tape for this middleweight fight, Alexander Nikulin and Rami Abuab. And look at the height and reach advantage for Nikulin, much taller, much longer reach. With the official introductions, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight here at Menorah Miftachim Arena in Tel Aviv, we go now to the middleweight division set for three five-minute rounds. We introduce first the blue corner. At five foot eight, weighing in 183 pounds even tonight. He makes his professional debut. He fights out of Hedera, introducing Rami Abuab. And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner at six foot even, weighing in 184 and three quarter pounds tonight. Once again, inside the Bellator cage, he stands undefeated at two and zero, oh, fighting out of Bersheva, introducing Alexander Nikulin. In charge of the action, referee Brian Miner. Brian Miner, our referee for this middleweight fight. Both men making their professional debut here inside the Bellator cage. Third fight for Nikulin overall. First fight for both men, as I mentioned, here in Bellator. Blue gloves for Rami Abuab, red gloves for Alexander Nikulin. Thirty-six-year-old from Israel, Rami Abuab. And the Russian Alexander Nikulin, 29 years old. And Nikulin needs to use that jab, use the reach advantage. You see that height disparity. It's not easy making your pro debut. Abuav has to get inside. He's got two challenges in front of him. Nerves and the length of his opponent. Who will be the aggressor early? Two schools of thought here. If you're the veteran, you know, do you want to start early and get on the guy making his pro debut before he's really gotten the nerves out? You know, overwhelm him, take advantage of the fact that he's nervous. The other one is, hey, drag him into a little deeper water. Don't go in there throwing with a guy who can always drop you with one punch, whether he has experience or not. Right now, it looks like Nikulin is taking his time. First punch thrown by Rami Bua. 90 seconds into the first round. Surprised in Nikulin not being a little bit more aggressive. Seems really content to move forward, but hasn't thrown very many strikes at all. There's the kick caught momentarily. And Alexander Nikulin. Whoa! Thrown a lot of strikes. Well, guess what? He just needed one. Boom! Great right hand. That's pretty much all she wrote. And there it is. Caught the kick. Doesn't take him down, but gets aggressive. That right hand landed, but this boom. one. Boom! Right over the shoulder. Alexander Nikulin. Knockout in his Bellator debut. The legs go right out from under Abuav. And this one is stopped early. Jimmy, it started when he caught the kick, and then he advanced from there. Exactly. Spun him around, disoriented him, and set him up for the right hand. Congratulations to Alexander Nikulin. Our official decision is coming up next. Knockout finish in round number one. To make it official, here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it officially ends. One minute, 57 seconds into round number one. The winner by knockout, Alexander Nikulin. Great way to open up inside the Bellator cage. Knockout in the first round for the Russian, Alexander Nikulin. Our next fight is in the lightweight division. Our tail of the tape. You see here, 7-0 versus a pro debuter. 
has his work cut out for him. With the official introductions, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, for tonight from Tel Aviv Bellator MMA, now presents three five-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing the blue corner first at five foot seven, weighing in 156 and one quarter pounds. Tonight, making his professional debut, he fights out of Albania. Introducing Julian Maloku. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot eight, weighing in 153 and one half pounds. His professional record undefeated. Seven victories, no losses from Kiryat Malahi presenting Oron the Fina McClone. In charge of the engine, your referee, Michael Bell. Michael Bell, our referee for this lightweight matchup. Oron Cologne and Yulian Maloka. Fight scheduled for three five minute rounds. We are underway, quickly pushing the pace in the blue gloves. Yulian Maloka. And in the red gloves, Israel's own Oron Cologne. Certainly starting out with confidence, putting his hands behind his back. A little of the Roy Jones, Conor McGregor. When you're really feeling it, that's what you do. Yeah, professional debut for the fighter out of Albania. And I think that's what's given Cologne the confidence. Cologne 7 and 0 oh in his professional career. Only one finish, that finish by submission. The guy who's used to going the distance. He has spent some time training in Las Vegas at Extreme Couture. Maluku looking for the takedown. Nice timing right around the guard. Exactly what you want to do. And right into side control, Jimmy. Point here. Pro debut, control your nerves. Don't rush. You're right where you want to be. Do everything you can to stay there. Switching sides. Got to keep the pressure on. He lost the inside battle on the outside. Makes it way easier to get guard. That's what he does. He's going to let him up. Wow. Interesting decision. So Maloku, very confident in his striking here. Scores the takedown. Now he's looking to counter. Trying to oh, he takes the submission victory for Oran Colon. Left right into the triangle. Easy finish from there. His one win by submission. Well, now he's got two. Two finishes of his career. An anaconda choke. And now the triangle. Look out of here. Jumps right into the triangle. Over the top. Stays a little too square in the beginning, but as soon as he gets the arm across, that's when he gets the finish. Great stuff from Colon. So a first round victory here in his Bellator debut, and there you see the tap, Jimmy. Yep, right there. Just got the, the triangle itself with the legs, then the angle with the hips, that's what leads to it. To make it official, here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the tap comes by way of a triangle choke. Official time, two minutes, eight seconds into round number one. The winner by submission, Aron the Fina Capone. Featherweight women inside the Bellator cage. 
our tale of the tape for this fight between Joanna Filippa and Olga Rubin. And look at the weight disparity, 145 versus 136 and a half. Rubin, much bigger tonight. With the official introductions, here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight here from the Nora Meet Zahim Arena, Bellator MMA now presents three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing first the blue corner at five foot four, weighing in 136 and one half pounds tonight, making her professional debut, hailing from Gaia, Portugal, Johanna the Shooter Felipe. And across the cage, your adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot eight, weighing in 145 pounds even. Her professional record, undefeated, three victories, no defeats, fighting out of Tel Aviv, presenting Big Bad Olga Ruby. And the referee in charge of the action, Kevin McDonald. So Kevin McDonald, our referee. Portugal's Filipa against Israel's Rubin. Here we go. Blue gloves for Portugal's Joanna Filipa. Red gloves for Israel's Olga Rubin. Both women southpaws. One thing to keep in mind, southpaws don't see southpaws any more than orthodox fighters do. It's not necessarily easier. It's awesome for them to fight Southpaws, too. Olga Rubin fought last year right in this building for Bellator and earned a first-round victory TKO win. And what this means to Southpaw fighters, a jab much more useful than it generally would be. Southpaw Orthodox are always trading power punches. And use the jab much more effectively against another Southpaw. Joanna Filippa, just 22 years old, making her professional debut. She's in the blue gloves, red gloves, as I mentioned. Three and all, Olga Rubin. Being a lot bigger in there. There she looks to use it. Put Filippa against the fence, make her feel that size and strength disparity. Two of her three professional wins have come in the first round. The other victory went to decision. Felipa trying to move away from the cage. Yeah, she has to get position to do that. Equal position right now at over under grip. Joanna Felipa trying to stay busy with those knees. Now, what's an advantage in MMA? Well, it's where you use it. If you're bigger and stronger, put her against the fence. She'll feel that size and strength a lot more. You see, that's what Rubin's doing. She's trying to work hard for the takedown. And there there it she is. gets it. That was just wrenching her to the right. Not much subtlety to that takedown. Yeah, that was upper body control. That's exactly what it was. Bad spot for Joanna Filippa. Looking for some ground and pound here. Sitting up, getting good range on that right side. Posture's up, Felipa up against the cage. It's a miserable place to be right now. No room, able to get full guard. Let's see if she can use it. Still so far, no answer for the physical pressure of Rubin. She's just putting it on her. Felipa does get to full guard, Jimmy. That only helps if you do something with it. You don't yeah. use full guard. It's attached to your opponent. She's trying to spin out of trouble here early, three minutes into round number one. Yes, yes. Being active on the right side. She needs to angle her hips, I mean, keep the head up against the fence. Ruben staying very busy. Close guard. Looking to posture up once again. Olga Rubin throwing down some heavy ground and pound. 
And it's because, Jimmy, she's able to posture up. Yeah, exactly. Able to get exactly the right distance. And she's just active. She's not letting Philippa get any rest. And so far, no guard work from Philippa. She hasn't uh, walked her legs up, hasn't gone for anything, hasn't given Rubin a reason to stop punching. It's one of these submissions that if you have a good submission game, it makes your opponent worry a little about, about what's coming, about your offense. So far, that hasn't happened. I'm trying to push away and get space, going to the defensive half guard. That's not helping her. Goes for the sweep. He wasn't able to get on top with it. Good adjustment made by Olga Ruby. Final minute of the round. She was looking for the mounted crucifix a moment ago. She's taking away the space here. Back to guard, but like I said, it's only an accomplishment if you if you're able to use it. Professional debut for the 22-year-old, and she's had to fight from her back pretty much this entire round. 15 seconds. Closing the guard again. Final seconds of round number one. And a big round for Olga Ruby. Fighting at home here in Tel Aviv for the second time inside the Bellator cage. Olga Ruby. Big round number one. She had top position. But Joanna Filippa still alive in this fight and ready to battle here in round number two. Southpaw against Southpaw. Let's see how Joanna Filippa adjusts here, especially early, Jimmy, in round number two. Well, she can't get in those clinch positions. She's just getting bullied. Up against the fence is where this all started. She wants to keep it in the center of the cage. That's the second counter with that left. She has to step in and give Rubin a reason to not come forward. Because right now, hasn't given it to her. This is where she's got to be careful, yeah, right? Exactly. That, that's where Rubin rushes. As soon as she gets her against the fence, and she closes that distance, isn't worried about the counter shot. It's pretty much an upper body takedown yeah. in round number one. Good knees by Olga Ruby. Kind of take that due to your little brother. Just lock him up and throw him. That's yep. exactly what happened. <laughs> and we mentioned we saw it on the tail of the tape, Jimmy. She is the much stronger fighter yeah. and a much more of a physical pre uh, physical presence at 58145. Yeah, she's definitely been the bully in there so far. <laughs> Joanna Filippa weighing in at 136. Philippa trying to stay very wide with her legs to avoid being taken down. And look at that, once again, just kind of knocking her over. Lost her balance there for a second. Nice knee to the body. And she waits and yeah. waits and then bullies her down. Exactly, and that knee to the body could have taken her legs out from under her for a second. Now she's exactly where she doesn't want to be. I thought that first round was 10-8. That was dominant. Up against the cage in your professional debut in your opponent's hometown. Not a lot of fun. <laughs> All of those things very, very bad. Yes, indeed. Watch your knee to the head. <laughs> As we mentioned, Olga Rubin 3 and 0 in her professional career. And you haven't gotten that sense that. Philippa's gotten Rubens' respect. That, that she's done anything that Rubens had to think about that's been particularly dangerous. That's made her think, oh, I gotta watch out for that. That hasn't happened yet. Have to have that moment to have a competitive fight. Just past the midway point of this three round battle. From the top, Rubin looking to throw down some elbows and some fists from the side. Good shots there. Teeing off with a couple hammer fists. Good 
good stuff and, and not letting off on that physical pressure. There's a triangle right there, but Felipe not able to lock it up, not able to get close. Tried to scramble out of trouble. Watch the knees. Look at that trap in the arm. Felipe has to bump her hips, get that right arm out. Side control, lots of time. 90 seconds, trying to get the arm, the mounted crucifix. Second round, she's been in survival mode. Has one arm trap, working for the other one. Nice trying to finish it with strikes right here. She can do it. Olga Rubin hammering away, and that's it. It is all over. Kevin McDonald stops the fight in round number two. No, it's about cage control for Olga Rubin. All about being the bigger, stronger fighter and knowing it from the beginning. She fought like the bigger, stronger, more experienced fighter. And this was the crucifix. Look at that right arm trap. Nothing but left hands. Couldn't get her head around it completely, but it didn't matter. Those short left hands right to the temple. That was all she wrote. Rubin could change her nickname to the bully, because yeah, that's what she go. was tonight. Fair enough. Jimmy, it was when she was able to trap that arm, as you mentioned, that was the beginning of the yeah, end. That was beginning of the end. She couldn't defend. I mean, that was good ground and pound in round one and halfway through round two. It was when she had that one arm trapped that it became fight-stopping kind of damage. Second round TKO for Tel Aviv zone to make it official. Here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end officially. Three minutes, 46 seconds into round number two. The winner by TKO, Big Bad Olga Ruby. Four and O oh. as a professional, two and O oh in the Bellator cage here in her hometown of Tel Aviv. The Menorah Mivkahim Arena in Tel Aviv, Israel. Our next matchup in the welterweight division. Our tale of the tape for Shimon Ghosh and Francisco Silva. And look at the experience difference. Ghosh 5 and 2, Silva 1 and 0. Oh. With the official introductions, once again, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, Bellator MMA now features three five-minute pops in the welterweight division. Let me introduce first to the boy at 5'6", weighing in 168.3 pounds. His professional record, 1 and 0. Oh, originally from Brazil, he fights now out of Cyprus, presenting Francisco Silva. And across the cage, after Zeni fighting out of the red corner at five foot eight, weighing in 169 and one half pounds. His professional record: five victories, two losses. Fighting out of Abu Ghosh, Israel, presenting Shimon Ghosh. And the referee in charge of the action: Todd Anderson. Todd Anderson, our referee. As we get set for this welterweight fight, Ghosh, Silva, here we go. They touch gloves, blue gloves for the Brazilian, now fighting out of Cyprus, Francisco Silva, red gloves for Shimon Ghosh. And this crowd so much behind Ghosh. Will he use that energy early? That's the question, you know, this crowd being so frenzied, you come in with so much juice, yeah. so much energy, how do you spend it? That's the question. Don't want to have that adrenaline dump. Exactly. Ghost looks pretty relaxed, though. Silva 1-0 in his pro career. Both men fighting in the Bellator cage for the first time. Great crowd here at the Menorah Mivkahi Marina. So far, Silva letting Ghosh be the initiator. 
Tried to come over the top with some counters. Gosh has finished all five of his professional victories. Four by submission, one by knockout. Both guys seem to want to counter. Neither one really wants to be the initiator in this fight so far. Like they both came in with a countering game plan. Sometimes that can be the problem. You have two counter strikers. Nobody be, no one wants to be the first one to take the risk. Gosh has had some success with the late kicks. Price hasn't come back to it again. Especially because both guys are kind of out of punching range. Yep. Silva with yeah, the kick. There you go with the late kick. He showed a potential spin earlier. Neither fighter taken over yet here in round number one. I think both guys are just more comfortable countering, and so they don't want to be the one to jump in there first. Like I said, that's when you take the first risk. Somebody's got to start so they can counter, and then they can counter and counter again. He's done well with that late kick, Gosh, yeah. but hasn't done it that much, only once or twice. That leg kick to the lower lead leg of your opponent it has become very popular. It's a great move when you're just out of punching range. You're able to chop your opponent down, get them moving. Those things hurt. Yep. Three minutes into round number one. Big oh. swing and a miss by Ghosh. That's a commitment with the right hand, but too far out for that. Didn't set it up with anything. These are two big welterweights. 43-year-old Francisco Silva and 39-year-old Shimon Ghosh. Second time he's fainted with that spin and he hasn't done it. Neither guy really using the lead hand very much. Not a lot of jabs, not a lot of feints. Switch kick, but way out of range. Followed up with the left that time. No setup. Hard to land that overhand right. You haven't set it up, and you haven't got your opponent to bite on any other offense. One professional knockout for Gauche. Oh, Lead left up. connects. And the combination by the Brazilian. Let's see if Gauche wants to play the ground game. He got emotional like he was going to let him up and then went in. Him up, you gotta back off, and he's not doing that yet. Silva saying, Come on, come on, let's grab a little bit. That's not gonna let this keep going. Yep, 40 seconds on the clock, round number one. Fighting out of Abu Ghosh, Israel, Shimon Ghosh in the red gloves, Francisco Silva, the Brazilian in the blue gloves. It's most convenient for you as a commentator when the guy's name is also where he's from. You only have to, only have, to have one. I like that. Yeah, he's yeah, got to memorize one, that's and, it. And that's, I got to admit, that's exactly how I did. <laughs> Said if I get it right this way, I can get it right this way. I'm sure his parents had you in mind. <laughs> Silva on the neck late in round number one. Up go, boys. Mike Goldberg, Jimmy Smith, we are set for the start of round number two. Francisco Silva and Shimon Ghosh. Look for the overhand right from Ghosh and look for a spin by Francisco Silva. Ghosh just went into southpaw and threw that kick. Now, yeah, see the nerves have settled down a little bit. Really cautious in round one. Give to Ghosh barely, just did a little bit more. There's the spin way too far out. Silva has this menacing grin <laughs> on his face. When you're fighting a guy uh, smiling at you, what's that like? Well, a lot of times it's an invitation to come in. It's you know, you're almost daring your opponent to throw something. I think a lot of a lot of it is, is more of a counterpunch. He wants Ghosh to initiate. 
That's why you see that kind of thing. But problem is, when you do that, you better back it up. Big time. Silva into the southpaw stance. Ghost goes right up the middle. Silva trying to establish some range here, and he switches back to orthodox. The only thing about the, the fighters known for their spinning techniques, Alexander Shemenko and Beltos, a great example, usually sets it up with their stuff. They yeah. start out with spinning stuff. It kind of throws a lot of stuff at you, and the spinning stuff kind of gets lost in the mix, and, you, and it, you're not ready for the timing of it. The spin is not telegraphed. Exactly. Ghost has been the overhand right, it's the big movement. And Silva's been able to see Silva's been able to Fainting and throwing the spinning kick, but easy to see that's coming, to see that coming if that's all you're doing. Fighting out of Cyprus, Francisco Silva. Looking to take this fight to the mat. Changes level and really commit. Ghost going over the top guillotine. Arm in, but no real commitment with the hips in. Just missing on the exit. Watch the right hand of Shimon Ghosh. I'm guessing that's what Silva's corner yeah, said between exactly. racks. He likes to load up. There it is again. Looking to change levels a little bit. I see big overhand right, and, and granted, he hasn't connected yet, and I just think Dan Henderson. Yeah, that's, that's his right. move, yeah. 100%. Always in the fight. First minute to the last minute is what you have to worry about. The H-bomb. Silva. But what Dan is so good at, and people don't give him the credit for is that kind of inside head dip and right hand easily sets up his takedown. So a lot of times, even if he misses, it's still a great technique for him. It puts him right where he wants to be. Also, he has a nice left hook off that right. So it's what he does around it that's really impressive. And that low kick from the left side, and then he connects with the right. Exactly. Close guard. Ghost looking to posture up. Silva initiated the ground game, but it's Ghosh in top position. Jimmy, you said round one to Ghosh? Yep. Just in a little bit more. Silva has to get his own offense going, which he hasn't yet done. You see here on the ground, you know, he's mitigating the damage well, hasn't eaten anything big, but. You don't win fights just by not getting hurt. You hurt your opponent, you gotta get your offense going, walking his legs. Nice slam. Uh, that cost a lot of energy over. Uh, the official with those kind of moves now is really pouring it on. right now. Uh, Ghost is all over him. Yeah, to get just enough posture to get good ground and pound. Todd Anderson right there. Yep, Silva trying to stay alive here. Problem with holding on to that leg is you can't block on your right side. Either roll through for the knee bar or let it go. Grappling match, you can hang on to that forever, look for a sweep. Well, this is not a grappling match. You get your right arm caught under that leg and you can't defend that side. Looks like trying to roll knee bar, but can't commit his hips to it. 30 seconds. Yeah, his hips are not in great position to finish this. He wants Gosh's leg between his two legs, and that's not happening. It's an easy stall for the next 15 seconds. And oh, another round for Shimon. Yeah, Gosh. all I have to do is put weight on that left leg. 10 seconds. Jiu-Jitsu for beginners. Someone's going after your leg, put all your weight on it. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Israel's own Gosh. Impressive in the second. Five minutes. Remain in this welterweight fight. Who will win their Bellator debut? Final five minutes. Blue gloves for Francisco Silva. Red gloves for Shimon Ghosh. I tell you, if I'm Silva, I gotta get a little less friendly in this third round. Came out smiling, faking a little capoeira. So far, he's getting outworked. See what adjustments he may make here early in round three. 
Might not be able to wait for that counter opportunity. Nicely done. Ghost has never won a decision. He's finished all of his wins. And again, he is on top. Now you have to make a decision. Do I want to pass or do I want to ground and pound? It's different strategies depending on which way you want to go. You have to factor in where your opponent is on the cage as well. Exactly. That'll define where you put your hips, the pressure you want to put is whether you want to hit the ground and pound or you want to pass. Pass is stay low, pound you go a little bit higher. Right now, he's yeah. ground and pound. Yeah, he's elected to ground and pound for sure. Looking to posture up. I know a lot of fighters that prefer ground and pound from half guard. Some prefer to do that even in the pass. They think it's easier than side control. Randy Couture, yeah. Nice right. And Silva has nowhere to go yep. when he's on the mat like that, eating that right hand. King Mo, Seth Petrozelli did the same thing. Cleared the legs, landed with the right hand. Retired oh, Seth Petrozelli, but exactly from this position, just like that. Oh, Wasn't able to get all of it there. Stay out of his eyes. Yeah, keep fighting. Body head. Silva looked like he was waiting to try to lock down the arm of Ghosh when he came in aggressively, but unable to do so. Now, angling for the armbar, trying to isolate the arm. The left arm of Ghosh, but not really in a position to do that. Cage is going to get in his way. Total control for Israel's Shimon Ghosh. Again, posturing up. Midway point of the third and final round. So Silva start thinking desperation time. How bad do you want to win? Forty-three-year-old Francisco Silva. Got to make something happen in the final two minutes here. See if Ghosh is going to let him up or not. Well, he was. He's very comfortable with the ground and pound. Let him up. Pardon me. Well, this is your chance, Francisco. Exactly. That's the way I saw it. And, you know, he had a chance to finish on top, ground and pound. This fight's over. But Silva still with the puncher's chance here. Guard pull, basically. Flopping right to his back. That's surprising. Under two minutes left, you make a move like that in a fight that you're down in. Exactly. He needs to knock him out in order to win. Todd Anderson switched it yeah, up. They're back up that. on their feet. <laughs> Top control, ground and pound throughout this fight for Shimon Ghosh. Stuff. Silva has to pull something out offensively that we haven't seen this entire fight. Under a minute now. And the problem is you're up against a guy who doesn't have to move forward. As Jimmy mentioned, Ghosh has finished all five of his professional victories. This one may go to the judges' scorecard. Ghosh seems content to let it go there. Backing up and around that he's far, far ahead. And if you're Silva, there's got to be some urgency yeah. here. Don't expect Ghost to come in and bang. Final 15 seconds. Ten seconds in the fight. They go the distance. Shimon Ghosh and Francisco Silva in their Bellator debuts fight the full 15 minutes here in Tel Aviv. The official decision when we come back.
Welcome back. This fight goes the distance. Ghosh and Silva with the official decision. Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance inside the Bellator cage, we'll go to your three judges. Your first judge, Michael Bell, scores the fight 29 to 28. Well, judges Brian Miner and Sal D'Amato both see the fight the same, 30 to 27. I'll have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Shimon Gosh. First time he has gone to a decision, but it goes his way. Shimon Gosh, victorious as he beats Francisco Silva here in Tel Aviv. Here inside Menorah, Mivkahi Marina, our tale of the tape for Luis Rocha and Al Shai. Well, instead of anything highlighted, these guys look at them almost identical. You very, mean, very similar. You mean virtually identical. I misspoke, virtually identical in every way. Well played, Jimmy Smith, with the official introductions, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, Bellator MMA tonight from Tel Aviv now moves to the bantamweight division set for three five-minute rounds. We introduce the blue corner at five foot six, weighing in 135 pounds even. His professional record, three wins, one loss. He fights out of Natal, Brazil, presenting Luis Rocha. And across the cage is adversary, fighting out of the red corner at five foot five, weighing in 135.3 pounds in his return tonight to the Bellator cage. He stands with two victories, one defeat, fighting out of Ashdod Israel, introducing Armog Shai. In charge of the action, referee Todd Anderson. Todd Anderson, our referee for this bantamweight fight. Al Moog Shai, victorious one year ago by heel hook in this building inside the Bellator cage. Here we go. The Brazilian, Luis Rocha in the blue gloves, red gloves for Al Moog Shai. Rocha, part of the Pitbull Brothers team. Tricky Pitbull came up to me before this fight and said, you wouldn't believe this kid's speed. You think you're out of range, and he nails you with the right hand. Trains is wrestling with Eric Albarison, who works with a bunch of the Brazilian fighters, lives in Phoenix, very close with the Olympian Henry Cejudo. One thing you look at, I mean, they weighed in about the same, but Rocha is gigantic for this weight class. That is a big dude. And a late opponent change for both men. Karel Medvedovsky was the original opponent for Rocha. Chai moved up on our prelim card, Jimmy, and they will battle right here, right now. And Hosha didn't believe he had an opponent, very disappointed. And then Chai's opponent backed out, and here they are. Center of the cage. <laughs> he said, I'll stay away again. from that spot. He slipped a little bit. Good sportsmanship from Hosha. Oh, nice switch kick. Hosha right now just taking the center, taking his time. A little bit like his mentors. The Pitbull brothers have fought their last few fights like this. And wait, they've been the, the patient ones. They've been the counter punchers. It's worked out for them. So far, it's working out for Hosha. But when they attack, they are ultra aggressive. It's like getting hit by lightning. Yep. That's the thing. You know, Patricky Pitbull used to be a really aggressive fighter. Start out really, really strong. And he got countered a couple times. Made some bad mistakes kind of changed his style to be more the counter puncher. It's worked very well for him. From aggressive to aggressor. Yeah, exactly. Southpaw stands for Hosha. See if we witness that closing speed that Patriki told you about, Jimmy. Another thing to keep in mind is that a, a slow start like this or a, a methodical pace if you're Hosha kind of takes the crowd out of it. Yep. You know, they're screaming at first, but you wait, take it slow a little bit, it lulls them down. All that energy goes away. Oh, nice kick. Hosha so far just picking his spots. Hosha, three and one as a pro, 28 years old. Also 28, his opponent, two and one. As I mentioned, he fought 
here inside the Menorah Mivkahim Arena one year ago for Bellator. Another kick. Just past the midway point of round number one. Now Shai has to find his own offense. Right now he's just waiting on the outside. Kind of looking for an opportunity to get in, but not creating one himself. You're dealing with an outside guy, a rangy guy, a fast guy, that doesn't work. Shai has finished both of his wins. Hosha one by knockout, two by decision. Shai has to put punches together to overcome that range disparity, that size disparity. And a nice quick kick again. Ribs are starting to get red. One punch will not get you there. Keep a look at the stance of Luis Hosha. Karate stance, very, very tall. Yep. Oh, so good with that spinning stuff. Quick kicks. Oh, my. And there's another quick one. Question mark kick almost. And up the middle. Stop Machida's kind of brought back into fashion yes. in MMA. And a guy like Stop. Oh, Steven Thompson now. Yep. Conor McGregor, a little more karate based with that stance. At least. Up a little bit straighter. For a second there with that right hand, that cost Hosha. First offense by Shai. Yeah, Almo Shai looking to put something together here late in round number one. Hosha now probably just trying to clear his head. Both guys trying to throw some knees here. Oh my, nicely done on the exit. 15 seconds. Good stuff late in round one for Israel's Almo Shai. Round two when we come back. And a round that was going Hosha's way. Look at this right hand, boom. Buckled him, good recovery. Came right back, but that was a nice right hand. And what you have to wonder about, remember, we are in Israel. This is an Israeli fighter. Hosha didn't land anything big. I thought he won the first round, but he didn't land anything big, and Shai did. And they're pointing out the area that's a little slippery for some reason. Warn him to stay away from it. But you gotta wonder if you're in Hosha's corner, hey, he might have won that first round just with that right hand. Absolutely. Especially landing that right hand in the latter part of the round. Judges tend to remember the latter part of yep. the five minutes. Remember the end. My advice would be fight like you lost the first round. I don't Absolutely. care if, whether you did or not, fight like you lost the first round. Not in panic mode. But but in aggressive mode. Watch for those kicks of the Brazilian Hosha. Now Shai fighting with a little bit more confidence than he did in round one. After that right hand, he feels like he can maybe do some damage here. He's very hesitant in the first part of that first round. Patricky Pitbull in Hosha's corner. Main event was initially scheduled as the rematch between his brother Patricio and Daniel Vaisho. Health cost is that one. Hopefully we will see that matchup soon. Oh, nice leg nasty. kick. Beautiful timing on that. I'm surprised he doesn't fall him to the ground. A lot of power in that low leg kick. Sweeping shot. Hosha is locked and loaded. Problem is lazy with that lead hand. Even though the overhand right that caught him in round one hasn't woken him up in terms of his defense. His chin still very high, hand very low. Bad combination. Oh, 
Two minutes in to round number two. Almo Shai able to get out of the way, and then he tried to throw his own kicks. Haven't seen much of the punches of Hoshai. He's been content to stay on the outside and kick. Nice right hand. Oh, and again, brutal. Nice kick to the low leg. The first one you kind of wondered was it just a low kick that he wasn't expecting? Yeah. That one, that one for you sure. You can see he was determined to sweep the, his opponent to the ground. Kick the leg right off from under the table. Now he's got him overreacting, stepping back to it. Yes. Switching to southpaw. Watch for the body kick. Nice straight left. Good at getting those pot shots, just like Patricky talked about. He looks like he's out of range, jumps in and hits you with a power shot. What he hasn't done well is, is, is combo off that. When you, when you strike like that from the outside, a lot of times it's hard to throw more than one. You find yourself back outside of range again. Momentum now in the Brazilian's corner after those two low leg kicks that swept shy right down to the canvas. 90 seconds remain in round two. Round one was very close. Kalmok Shai, a Zuri fighter. Went high with the kick again. Hosha able to get out of dangerous range. Look at that physical disparity. As soon as they locked up, you know which one's the stronger guy. Patricky in his corner here in Tel Aviv. Pass him against the fence, doesn't keep him there. Thought he might close distance and throw some hands, but. Chai tried that right hand again, partner. Yep. Eh, why not? Worked in round one. 30 seconds. Swing and a miss. And making a miss, but he's not making him pay. He kind of wants to reset back to this position where he can pick him apart with the legs. But he doesn't really count him with the hands, or he hasn't so far. Like that, a guy kicks, lands right in front of you. Especially with his hands down. Yeah. So far, not taking advantage. Much more comfortable with the feet than with the hands. Tried the flying knee. Round two in the books. Instructions in both corners. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together as we go now to the third and final round. Who'd you like in round number two? Definitely Hosha. Thought he took it 10-9. Five minutes remain. Blue gloves for the Brazilian. Red gloves for the Israeli fighter. Yeah, got his mouthpiece. So how do you have it scored overall? I have it two rounds to none. I thought Pitbull took, I'm sorry, Pitbull's fighter, Hosha, <laughs> took the first two rounds. So everyone on that team is Pitbull. <laughs> A couple of them are you utilizing that nickname already. Yeah, but I have it Hosha, two rounds to none. Let's see what answer Al Mok Shai might have as he looks to win once again inside the Bellator cage. You see the stance, and thus that kick. Karate stance, 100%. Problem is, if you're Hoshi, you don't want inactive rounds that, oh, you know, could go either way. I mean, takes taking on a hometown guy. You want definitive rounds. You want to really hurt him, back him up. Put your stamp on it every time. And even in round two, I, th I thought around the Hosha clearly won. 
Shy got more active toward the end of the round. And he did so in round number one. Neither fighter should be confident yeah. that they're up 2-0 right now. I can't feel great about it. No. Things like that, a guy comes running at you, doesn't even throw a jab at him. Wants to reset back to this position. That's something he really needs to work on. First fight here in Bellator for Hosha. The tall Brazil, his home. Nice. Left hand over the top. Two minutes into the third. Oh, Another my good goodness. Left. Caught him coming in. See, he waits. He hits him, and then he almost he bounces him off the fence, and he waits and resets. Doesn't take advantage of those moments where he might have Shy really hurt. You'd like to see some punches and bunches. Yeah, exactly. So one thing you know missing from his arsenal when it comes to striking is when he has a guy hurt, he only throws one punch, only throws one shot. He likes this reset range. He has almost no use for his lead hand. Right there, quick power shot. Yep. No jab, no hook over the top. From the southpaw stance again by Hosha. Jab hand has just been a measuring stick. He has shown us that he's very comfortable in the orthodox or the southpaw stance. Outside trip. Nicely done. Good turn by Hosha. Got the throw, couldn't keep the position. Chai threw him down, Hosha ends up on top. Good job getting back to full guard. Luis Hosha has Almog Shai pushed up against the fence. 115 in the third and final round. Right now he's showing a lot of respect for the ground game of Shai. Not really trying to posture up, leave anything behind. Seems right now content to stay safe. I don't see the ref letting this go on much longer. 60 seconds. Stop! Up we go. Let's go. Todd Anderson stands him up with 45 on the clock. Shy with the right hand. Heavy kick from Hosha. Shai showing a bit of desperation here. Easy turn and take down by Hosha. Again. Final seconds of this fight. And they go the distance. Ah, uh, the crowd celebrating one of their own, Al Moog Shai. He goes the distance with Luis Hosha with the official decision. Here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, for your official decision, we'll go to your three judges at cage side. Your first judge, Brian Miner, scores the fight 29 to 28, while judges Michael Bell and Eric Colon both see the fight the same 30 to 27. All have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Luis Hosha. No surprise there, Jimmy. Yeah, I thought he controlled all three rounds. Good heart by Shy, but great technique by Hosha. Our first fight here on Spike. Kill and Middleton. And you see the height and reach advantage for Middleton. She is the much bigger fighter tonight. With the official introductions and to get us officially underway, Michael C. Williams.
Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome as Miller Lite presents Bellator MMA. Tonight, from Menorah Miftahim Arena in Tel Aviv, Israel, the action begins now with three five-minute rounds in the flyweight division. Introducing the blue corner first at five foot seven, weighing in 125 pounds even. Her professional record stands at two and two. She fights out of Wichita, Kansas, USA, Jessica Middleton. And across the cage, her adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot two, weighing in 125 and one quarter pounds. The reigning Bellator kickboxing flyweight world champion tonight makes her debut inside the Bellator cage. Her professional MMA record stands at 0 and 1. She fights out of Amsterdam, Netherlands. Denise Miss Dynamite Kielholz. What is begins the referee in charge, Todd Anderson. Todd Anderson, our referee for this flyweight matchup here inside the menorah, Mivtahi Marina. Jessica Middleton and Denise Kielholz. Here we go! Jessica Middleton in the blue gloves. Miss Dynamite. Bellator's flyweight kickboxing champion, Denise Kielholz, in the red gloves. Middleton told us that I'm not scared to stand and bang with Kielholz. Want to see what she's got. One thing about Kielholz's style, not a lot of knockouts. Generally wins by decision. Doesn't have that big one-shot power, even in kickboxing. She just got clipped with the right hand early. Black belt in judo, former member of the Dutch national judo team. Kiel holds the five-time world kickboxing champion. And those little sharp pocket. combinations, good stuff. And Middleton wants none of that. There's the judo throw, head and arm. That can be dangerous in MMA, though. If she pulls her head out, she can take her back. Trying to extend the arm. Going from the arm bar from that position. Problem is the hips aren't exactly in the right spot to finish it. So she's trying to extend the left arm of Middleton. Middleton has one hook in. Gonna look to pull her head out and take the back. Denise Kielholt told us she has spent the last three months working on her ground. Now she got it! it. That's right, a kickboxing world champion who won by submission in the first round off a head and arm throw straight to the arm bar. Great stuff. How good is that? And an emotional Denise Kielholz. And it started with the combination. She was doing a great job on the feet. And then that's when Middleton went in for the clinch. Not expecting the throw, but here's how it ended. Look at that arm stretch. Hip got over it, and that was it. Take a look at it again. Able to sit out. As soon as she was able to do that, that's when you can cover the arm with your opposite leg. Beautiful arm bar. Jimmy, if I would have asked you, list in order the ways Denise Keelholtz could win this fight, where would arm bar be on your list? Bottom. bottom. Absolute bottom. <laughs> Thought when you should. You know, she has those judo skills. Sure. I'm not taking on away from her. I thought she would use that defensively, use that base, stay on the feet, and then finish it with her hands. And great job by Denise Kielholz. Outstanding finish early by Miss Dynamite Denise Kielholz. Our official decision from Tel Aviv is coming up next. What a great performance by Denise Kielholz with the official decision. Here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it ends by way of a scarf hold arm bar. Tap, and officially, 116. Round number one, the winner by submission, Denise, Miss Dynamite, Kielholz. Winner by submission. Just one minute and 16 seconds into the fight. Miss Dynamite with Jimmy Smith.
I'm here with your winner, Denise Gilholtz, kickboxing world champion, winning by submission. We knew you had the judo, but take me through the end of that fight. You went after that armbar, and that throw with so much confidence. I know, I know. Um, some people forgot I got also my black belt judo. It's been a long time that I did it. But uh, yeah, here is like a fish in the water, you know? <laughs> this crowd, so excited to see you, so vocal in their support. How did that feel fighting here in Israel in front of these fight fans? Sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm in a dream. I didn't hear, I didn't hear the, the question, sorry. <laughs> so how did it feel fighting in front of this crowd, all the yelling, all the screaming, so much behind you? Oh my God, the first time that I came here, I came in, I feel the audience, it was so, I, the only thing I can say, amazing. Thank you, uh, thank you everyone, guys, thank you. Was that important to you to show the rest of the division you're not just a kickboxer, you don't mind going to the ground, you have the takedown, you have the submission game, was that important to you tonight? Well, uh, yes, because um, you know, my dream is now I have the blue belt, but how amazing it will be if I have also the red belt. Not just kickboxing, but MMA. She wants to be a two belt champion. Denise Kilholz, ladies and gentlemen. She told us she spent the past three months working on her ground game. The legendary Hoyce Gracie loves the finish by submission. Set for this middleweight matchup, John Salter and Jason Ratcliffe, our tale of the tape. We talk about finishing ability, 26 combined fights with these two fighters, 26 finishes don't blink. Neither fighter has ever gone the distance. With the official introductions, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight Bellator MMA now moves to the middleweight division set for three five-minute rounds. It's brought to you tonight by Spike Sports. And we introduce first the blue corner at six foot one, weighing in 186 pounds, even his professional record. 12 wins, four losses, fighting out of Thailand. He hails from London, England, presenting Jason, the assassin, Radcliffe. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner. At six foot one, weighing in, 186 pounds even as a professional. He brings 14 victories, three defeats, hailing from Gardendale, Alabama. He fights out of Wilmington, North Carolina, USA, presenting John Salter. In charge of the action, your referee, Michael Bell. Michael Bell, our referee. Middleweight matchup here inside the menorah, Mivkahi Marina, John Salter. Against Jason Radcliffe. Here we go! Red gloves for John Salter, southpaw stance. Orthodox fighter in the blue gloves, the Brit. Jason Radcliffe. The problem Radcliffe is going to have is he wants to make a statement early, you know, literally and figuratively punch Salter in the mouth. Let him know you're not afraid, but doesn't want to walk into a takedown. Salter, excellent ground game. He talked to us, Jimmy, about fighting a southpaw. There's some things that you're supposed to do, but he said, I have some tricks for him. He's going to have to be tricky. I don't think he wants a straight on fight with Salter. We saw against Kendall Grove, he threw for a little bit. Then went for the takedown and just choked Kendall Grove out. And Kendall Grove, excellent jujitsu in his own right. And Can that he get was it? expected. Yep, stuffed. Takedown number one. Now look how tenacious Salter is being with it. That's what separates mm -hmm. great wrestlers from pretty good ones. That second and third effort for the takedown, he's still going for it. Salter, 2007, NAIA National Wrestling Champion. Also, Abu Dhabi representative of the United States. The last Abu Dhabi tournament. Lost to Shanjay in the first round. Shanjay Hibero, no shame in that loss. You guys talked about that, yep. and, and Salter loved the experience. Yeah. If you're going to lose to somebody, you know, Shanjay's <laughs> yeah. one uh, jujitsu genius, in my opinion. A one hook and turning his back exactly where he doesn't want to be. Already one hook in. They are dry, only a minute and a half in. 
Radcliffe trying to protect himself. He has to be so careful right now. The problem is it's hard to protect yourself from the strikes, the hooks, and the choke. Yeah. And he has to do all three. Because any one of them could end the fight now. Salter going hard for the rear naked. Six fight win streak for John Salter. Can he get it? It's, it's all over! Just like that, John Salter! Soon Another as, first round finish. As soon as this fight went to the ground, start your stopwatch. Salter, excellent submission game. He just showed it. Third straight win in round number one for Salter. Unbelievably dangerous. Susie committed to that double leg, pushed him against the fence, went to that second effort, and once this hit the ground and Ratcliffe turtles, his options got fewer and fewer until there were none. 15 pro wins, 12 in the first round. This is how it finished. Look, one hook in doesn't matter. If you get under the neck, puts that pressure on, this would tap out anyone in the division. Pressure with the choke, and it was just a matter of time. John Salter locks it in. And he is now 5-0 in his Bellator career. Congratulations once again to John Salter. The official decision of this middleweight fight from Tel Aviv is coming up next. Once again, John Salter said, I'm the best middleweight in Bellator. It's just a matter of time before there is no one else left to beat. He wins here tonight. To make it official, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the tap comes by way of a rear naked choke. Official time, one minute, 55 seconds into round number one. The winner by submission, Unsalted. 155 of the first, the official time for John Salter's win. a guy like you, a good finisher, a guy who is aggressive, especially on the feet, you have the cure for that. Yeah, you know, uh, my first fight in Bellator, I went into the second round. The stool was pretty uncomfortable, so I decided I'm just going to keep finishing first round until I get that title shot. Well, we appreciate that. Quick fights every time. The ground game, not just good, but evolving. You were in Abu Dhabi recently. You spent a lot of time on your jiu-jitsu. That's showing here, but you're testing the stand-up every time. We saw it against Kendall Grove. You're content to stand to set it up. I work my stand up more than I work anything, but like you said, I want to make sure I'm that best grappler in the world every time I step in the cage. Now, there are some big names, not just the champion, Rafael Carvalho, but a lot of big names around your division, Gegard Mousasi, Rory McDonald, but you're the one that says, I'm representing this division, you got to go through me. What's your message to them? Those guys are all studs, but I'm finishing in the first round. I'm not making mistakes in here, so I think I've set myself up as the number one guy. You heard it, John Salter, ladies and gentlemen. 5-0, John Salter with another submission victory. He has never been to the judges' scorecard. Gozali and Vitovich are tail of the tape for this welterweight fight. Look at it, 20 years separating these two fighters. Heim Gozali, 44, Vitovich, 24. Those 20 years more are the ones he's been with Henzo Gracie. With the official introductions, here's Michael C. Williams. Tonight, from Minora Mitahim Arena, Bellator MMA on Spike. Now features tonight's co-main event, three five-minute rounds in the welterweight division. Introducing the blue corner at six foot two, weighing in 170 and one half pounds. His professional record, four wins, one loss, fighting out of Lviv, Ukraine, presenting Arsene, the Hunter Vytovich. And across the cage is adversary, fighting out of the red corner at five foot 10. Weighing in 169 and one half pounds. Returning once again to the Bellator cage, he brings seven professional victories, four defeats, hailing from Makihami, Israel. Introducing Haim Gosali. In charge of the action, your referee, Brian Miner. Brian Miner, our referee. 
Play hard, play clean, touch them off your legs. Good luck to both of you. Haim Gozali. Arsene Fajtovic. Fight scheduled for three five minute rounds. Here we go! Gozali, the Southpaw in the red gloves. Ukraine's Fajtovic in the blue gloves. That's how much taller Fajtovic is. Four inches taller. Thus, Gozali closes the distance early, Jimmy. Surprising takedown from Fajtovic. Gozali going guard in triangle position. He walked that leg up, and there it is. Man, Fajtovic in trouble early. Can he finish it right here, right now? Pulling down on the head. And he's got to pull down on the head and angle. It's tight now. Wants to angle to his left. Now going straight over. He, he got it. it. All it took was one takedown. Fajtovic, serious mistake. And Haim Gozali, man, this place is shaking. Easy triangle finish. That's what the doctor ordered for the hometown crowd. How good was that? Jimmy, I asked Haim Gozali what would be his biggest strength? And he said, I can fight MMA on my back. And that's exactly what he did after this takedown. First day jujitsu, one arm in, one arm out. You got a problem with triangle, and he went out. He was here, it looked like he was straightening the arm bar. It was the triangle that finished it. He is all the way out. Great recognition by the referee. Tight triangle, and that was all she wrote. Beautiful stuff from his back by Haim Gozali. Last year, it took him one minute and 41 seconds to finish Zane Clerk with the heel hook. Tonight, he quickly finishes Arsen Vajtovic to make it official, Michael C. Williams. Just inside the Bellator cage, a triangle choke in deep. There's no tell. It ends officially. 45 seconds into round number one. The winner by submission, Han Rosari. His 17-year-old son, Aviv, in his corner. I'm here with the winner, Han Gozali. You said when I'm here in Israel, I'm not alone, I'm untouchable, I'm invincible. That's how you look tonight, man. This is my family over here, see? All over there. This is my family. Were you surprised by the early takedown? You reacted well to it, just starting to mix it up, and he initiated the takedown. Did that take you by surprise? No, I saw his fight. I know he's going to take me to the ground, and he took me to the ground. I'm on the ground, it's like a shark in the water. I don't care. Taking on a guy 20 years your junior, you showed you still have a lot in the tank. The young guys still have a lot to learn. How does that feel? I'm feeling good. And uh, for all of you, it's never too late to dream. Never. What do you have to say to this crowd? I know your coach, Henzo Gracie, very proud. A win like this. Tell them how it feels. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling incredible, you know, to, to win in front of my family over here. It's crazy. And my mother's over here. First time my mother, 40 years I'm fighting. First time she's coming to see me fight today. In front of mommy has a great performance. Haim Gozali, ladies and gentlemen.
evening. And it's not about what they are now, it's where they came from. Labiano, a lot of fights at 139. Noad Lahat, very comfortable at 146. Everything else is virtually identical. Boom! With the official introductions of our main event, once again, here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, Bellator MMA on Spike. Tonight from Tel Aviv, the time has come. Scheduled for three five-minute rounds. This is the main event of the evening. Sanctioned tonight by the Mohegan Tribe Department of Athletic Regulation. Chief is Lynn Malerba. Chairman is Kevin Brown. Supervising at cage side is Mr. Mike Mazzulli. Tonight's main event is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer. It's Miller time. And now, first introducing the blue corner. At five foot nine, weighing in 146 pounds even. His professional record, 11 wins, five defeats from Hayward, California, USA. Presenting Jeremiah, the Kid Labiano. And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner. At five foot nine, weighing in 146 pounds even. Inside the Bellator cage for the fourth time in the past year. The veteran professional tonight brings 11 victories, three defeats, hailing from Alfie Menashe Israel, presenting Noah Miho Laha. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Kevin McDonald. All right, gentlemen, this is three rounds under the unified rules of mixed martial arts. We went over those rules in the back. I want a good, clean fight. Any questions red? Any questions blue? If you want touch gloves now, come out swinging. Little bit of bad blood brewing for this main event tonight. You could see it. They touched gloves, but they also did the mean mug look like that. La hot. Labiano. Main event of the evening. Here we go. Noad Lahat in the red gloves. Jeremiah Labiano in the blue gloves. And once again, will the energy of the crowd make Noad Lahat carry himself a little too fast, or will he stay patient? Very proud to fight at home in the Bellator cage again. His fourth professional fight here in Tel Aviv. Do we have an accidental light poke I, there? I, I think he was complaining about the fingers. I don't know if they actually made contact, but he's definitely thinking about them. Labiano right now playing the outside, letting Noah Adelhat be the aggressor. And he dared Labiano to come in, and he did. What a big week for the Israeli fighters. Meeting the Prime Minister. Gozali thrilled the crowd. Will Lahat do the same? Aviano playing the outside. Looks like he's looking to counter. There's the commitment. He knew he'd go in and get that clinch soon. He wants his fight on the ground, and he wants to be on top. Both men have excellent Brazilian jiu-jitsu skills. As we start thinking about the physical differences, Nawad Lahat a little bit bigger, might be a little bit stronger. Positions like this is when you're really going to feel it. His home is Israel, but he trains in Las Vegas with Robert Fallis, Jimmy Zimmerman, Trains at the Dewey Cooper, with Dewey Cooper at the Mayweather Gym. Little time with Robert Drysdale, Lahat, facing Labiano, who is a black belt under Alexander Crispin, who was born and raised in Rio de Janeiro. Problems under attack, Labiano's going straight back. Against an opponent who wants to put you on the fence, you have to angle off. You're gonna find yourself backed against the fence all the time. You find your, your, your movement limited. Labiano spent some time sparring with Andre Ward, the 2004 gold medalist, just, you know, outstanding boxer, perfect record, recently retired. 
as they meet for some striking, and Labiano says it's not so fast. He likes baiting him, throwing those hands down. Just missed with that kick. Problem is that threw him off balance. Yep. Had the up kick. Ends up on his back. Good job getting guard back, because he had him over that right leg for a second. Looked like he was going to pass, and Labiano got his guard back. Talk about both guys having jujitsu skills. What's the difference? Be on top. Yes. That's, uh, that, you know, that's the difference maker. And it's Nawad Lahat on top. He has the option of going jujitsu or going to his ground and pound. Labiano right now going close guard. Thought it for a second about walking his legs up. Said he poked him in the eye. That's what he complained about. Lahat. Spent about seven years at AKA, Crazy Bob Cooking Company, since he's gone to Extreme Couture. Doing a good job locking him down. No guard pass yet from Lahat. Little tiny efforts at ground and pound, but nothing big. You see Labiano able to lock him down and keep his posture low. You want, the, you want to get your posture back, some separation to really get ground and pound. Labiano so far not allowing that. Labiano's instructors we talked about, Alexander Crispin, is a Half Gracie black belt. Problem is keeping hot this close to him negates his own submission game. Lahat trying to posture up and work his way free. Labiano doing an excellent job of controlling the posture of Lahat. Problem is we haven't seen much offense from him. He's on the bottom, Lahat's on top. To most judges, that's winning the round, period. Final 10 seconds of round number one. Just missed with the elbow. Got to rise out of the crowd. He hit the canvas with his fist. That's what you heard. Our main event, commercial free here on Spike. This is why the fight ended up on the ground. Went for the high kicks, lost his footing. You see Lahat almost passing to Labiano's right side, but Labiano able to get his guard back from there. Not a lot going on. Short ground and pound. Slams look good, but you just lift him up, drop him, cost you a little bit of energy. Crowds love it. But not able to pass, not able to get any, you know, serious fight ending ground and pound going. But I definitely think you won the round. So you scored 10-9. 10-9, Nawad Lahat. Round one in the books. Kevin McDonald talking about the fingers around the eyes. Good control here in the cage. Round two. Laviano comes out firing. He's got the blue gloves. Lahat, the Israeli fighter in the red gloves, just ate an uppercut. Laviano needs to make a statement. Ah, oh, tell him to meet him right in the center. That. Lahat going for the takedown. Laviano, a lot of gamesmanship in this one. Stop, 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 stop. Knee to the cup. Yep. Hey, hey, right here. Hey. That landed in an unfortunate place. Don't expect this crowd to be exceptionally patient with Labiano. Five minutes is five minutes. And it was a knee in the clinch. Boom. Yep. There it is. What Lahat is not doing is he's not letting himself get drawn into a brawl. Labiano pointing at the ground saying, come meet me. What's he doing? Going for the takedown. Still using the smart play. Nice right hand over the top by Labiano. Labiano said, I like to stand. I like to be exciting. I go out there and try to win. And he is turning up the pressure here early in round two. Now Lahat content to throw some punches, changing it up a little bit. They clinch in the center of the cage again, and now Lahat puts some pressure on Labiano on the fence. When someone is cut. I can't see exactly who, but there's blood on the arm of Labiano. Could be 
from either guy. So well, that judo background really helps Lahat. He's in close positions, tight with the clinch. That's where those hip throws and trips are such a factor. Jeremiah Labiano avoiding the takedown. Yeah, just and just, you know, yeah, he, just he him. was until you said that. <laughs> exactly. So you weren't wrong. It's like saying shut out <laughs> in the third period of a hockey game. I don't, I don't understand that metaphor at all. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. My other partner didn't understand yeah, that I either, know, you know? Yeah, I know. hockey. <laughs> it's like fighting except with pads on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I watch MMA, let's skip straight to the fighting. <laughs> the goals and stuff. Half guard position, there you go, half guard position. A little more advanced than Lahat was able to get in round one. But Laviano still choosing that lockdown position. Not going for a lot of submissions, just trying to keep La uh, Lahat close. And Laviano's in good position right now to, to, to get back to his feet using the fence. Good job by Lahat, pulling him, just turning him right against the fence. So his back isn't on it. Nahat said his entire family still lives here in Israel. He had been away for about five months, had back-to-back -back fights, Chicago and Verona. But he is home, and he wants to be home for Christmas. He'd like a win to celebrate the holiday season. The December with Hanukkah and Christmas would be a joy for Noad Lahat here at home. Oh, look, this half guard lamento has got to get something done, either a sweep or get back to full guard. And turn and get back to his feet. But a lot of pressure by Noad Lahat. Lahat began training in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu after he oh. served in the military. Labiano trying to push himself away from the fence. Very deep half guard Stop. position. Stop. Uh, Stop. That was the ear. Up. That uh. was the back of the head. You stand up and go right Another over here. Another one to the back of the head. Hey, he might I lose a point for this. Second time out for a foul. All right, just hang here with me. I'll be back in a minute. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw a point deduction here. Jimmy J, look at it. When he says, I targeted the ear. Let's see who's right. Uh, it was pretty close. You see he's trying to target the far ear, but eh, I, I, I could see it either way. I see why he called the foul, but I see how he was trying to maybe get around to the ear. But... Referee's calls that it was to the back of the head. Kevin McDonald talking to both fighters. And, and that's another thing, too. I, I don't know if it's going to take away a pointer. I think it's just another warning. Yes. He but, would have taken away the point by now, you would think. Right, you imagine he would have. But, but another thing is, is that, uh, uh, to keep in mind, is the gamesmanship before the fight, when, you know, the referee's talking about the instructions and you're pushing toward your guy, the ref's looking out for fouls. They're not gonna be real tolerant of stuff. And he took away the point. There we go. A little bit late, but he takes it away. That could be huge in a close fight. Two separate fouls. That's a judgment call as to whether or not to take a point. But when you were mugging in the beginning, when you were a little hostile, when the, the, the directions being given, referee's gonna maybe take away a point because of that, with that in mind. Let me put it that way. Kevin McDonald talked to both men, thought about it, yep. and he did deduct one point from Noid Lahat for the illegal strike. Kimura here off the high crotch. Now trying to roll with it. He kicks hard, he can take the back. Thinking footlock. In heel hook position. That's tight. That's a good one. Laviano trying to spin his way out of it. And he does. Now going inverted. That's deeper. Inverted is more dangerous. Laviano now trying to kick his way out. You see him trying to extend his right foot. 
He twists them both up, does another leg lock there. A lot of options here. Final seconds of round two. The Hot looking to lock something down. Counter leg lock by Labiano, but good kick out by Lahat. We stay right here. Our main event inside the menorah, Mivkahim Arena. Five minutes remain. Good body kick by Lahat. The problem is that Labiano has done a good job when he's, when he's thrown punches in the center of the cage. He hasn't been able to keep it there. When Lahat has needed it, he's been able to clinch and take Labiano down. There was some back and forth with him and Gallagher, and then with Labiano and Lahat. And, and he told us, Jimmy, he doesn't take anything personally. Yeah. He breathes off that energy. Yeah, exactly. But he says Lahat has tried to make this fight personal. He knows what kind of energy that brings to a fight. You don't talk about smacking a guy in the cage because you're happy with him. <laughs> you can say he doesn't take it personally, but there's an edge to this fight for sure. Lahat on the fence this time. Labiano goes for a takedown of his own. He hasn't been able to get top position yet. Back inside position. Some head fighting here. There we go. Turn it. Right in front of his corner. You can hear him say turn it, and he did. Pull him out back. That's it. Pull him out and sit if you got this. The voice of Robert Fallis. Yep. And he listened to him, said pull him out and sit him down. That's exactly what happened. Jimmy, that's one of those things that is oftentimes understated, being right there next to your team. And being a good listener. You know, an experienced fighter, guys that succeed at the high level, they listen to their coaches. Noid Lahat told us he always makes sure to fix what is broken. It's been a big learning curve for him. Think about the pass, he sliced that right knee through. Both men with 11 professional wins. Good job using that other foot, push the thigh down. They can pound, they can ground pound, but after the pass, pass first. Nice job by Noid Lahat here. Just past the midway point of our third and final round. Uh, he got the pass, and then he circled it with his leg, ended up back in half guard. Top control, much like round one for Lahat. Get the gun, get the gun! Two minutes to go, looking great here. Amazing to be on the first Bellator card in Israel. He's the main event, the second time we visit Tel Aviv. Look at the pressure of Nuad Lahat. He's not giving Labiano any space. No scrambling room to pop up and get his back against the fence. That just hasn't been there. Good stuff by Labiano in the center of the cage, but in this position, on the ground, against the fence, clinch, not a lot of space. That's where Lahat has owned it. Lahat came into AKA many years ago for Josh Thompson, preparing for Gilbert Melendez. That was an outstanding trilogy. AKA, they go to war in the gym. Everybody knows that. Yeah, absolutely. Noid Lahat spent about seven years in San Jose at AKA. One minute on the clock, third and final round. Labiano's got to do something. Time. Trying to angle up, maybe hunting for the arm, but that's not going to happen from this position. It can happen from here if he can get his leg over the face. Lahat doing a good job of squaring up with the hips, following him, not letting him cut the angle he needs. Clean, guys. 
On a night that was supposed to be headlined by Pitbull and Vice Show, Mahat said, I was always the main event. My head <laughs> got bigger on the poster. That was the only change. <laughs> Just mentally, I was always number one. Yeah, absolutely. He's a confident young man. Back up, back up, back up. Let's go. Ten seconds. They battle to the very end. And they go the distance. No surprise here that they ended the fight swinging. Great effort by both fighters. Laviano just had a little bit more in those clinch takedown and ground positions. I think that was the key to the fight. The point deduction in round two, but Lahat made sure to stay aggressive. That's because positions like this, look at this body lock and down. I talked about the real life weight disparity. I mean, Lahat more comfortable at 45, a little bit bigger. And you can see the physical pressure he put on Laviano on the ground. Great job in round number three, passing with that right leg. Labiano not able to get those scrambles, not able to use his speed, not able to use the physical advantages he had. They were negated by the ground game of Noad Lahat. Michael C. Williams with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go to your three judges at cage side. Eric Colon, Sal D'Amato, Michael Bell, all score the fight exactly the same. 29 to 27, all have it for the winner by unanimous decision. Tel Aviv's very own Nohad Nihal Nohad Lahat has made his way into the crowd. The victory for Israel's own. I'm here with a very happy Nawad Lahat. Nawad, thank you very much. A little gamesmanship, a little talk before this fight and during this fight. But on the ground, man, it was all business. Jiu-Jitsu, baby. I'm the best, I'm the best in the world. Everything grappling. So I feel comfortable there. Uh, it was a hell of a fight. Tough dude. <laughs> Hard to kill. But I know, I know him and his team for a while from North California. Man, it was fun. Didn't you love it? Love them. That's the trash. I'm going to go to the world. I'm going to go to the world. I'm going to go to was it hard in the beginning when he would challenge you to not turn it into a brawl for the crowd, to stick to your game, to stick to your top game? Was that tough mentally? Uh, the, the crowd cared about one thing, me doing this at the end. That's about it. It's an educated crowd. They know what's up. They, Israelis, they know what fighting is. They know who's the winner. It's not about size. It's about who control the aggressive, who dictate the pace. And that's what I did. I took a few hits. You can tell I got a nice one. Probably a little visit at the ER. But it's part of the fun, baby. It's all worth it, your winner, Nawad Lahat, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for him. Standing ovation for Nawad Lahat, who wins by unanimous decision in our main event.